the 28th installment to the MCU in chronological order takes us to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the sequel to the first Doctor Strange movie and also a follow-up to the WandaVision TV show. So basically in this movie, Doctor Strange has to travel through the multiverse in order to stop Wanda, who has fully transformed herself into the Scarlet Witch, and she's basically hunting down the multiverse for this child known as America Chavez, because if Wanda is to obtain America's power, that'll give her the control to travel through every dimension possible in order to be reunited with her children that she created without the usage of, through the use of black magic. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the overall story of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Let's talk about it. I think Doctor Strange 2 is a very frustrating movie. On paper, this thing has a lot going for it, but in execution, it is just increasingly frustrating to sit through because there are so many things that were set up in that first movie that were not that were rarely touched upon, barely referenced, and don't even have any expansion upon. And for the movie that this thing that this thing's trying to tell, it acts more like a Wanda movie than a Doctor Strange movie. And I don't like that. I don't appreciate the fact that Doctor Strange takes a back seat in his own movie and Wanda and Wanda and America Chavez are pretty much the, the focal points. I don't like that at all. It should have been the other way around. Doctor Strange should have been the lead of his own damn movie with the character arc, while Wanda and America Chavez are just are what, are what they are, supporting characters and not the main characters. Uh, it's clear as day that Marvel wanted to do a, uh, a Wanda solo movie, but since they don't really trust Wanda as a solo character to helm her own movie, you put her in Doctor Strange and you have her and you have her invade and infect his movie to the point where she has all the character has all have all has all the character beats while Strange is just there doing dick all. <clears throat> I don't like that. That's a big gripe I have against this movie. But before I go into my negatives, I do want to illustrate positives because at the end I do have some good positives I do have for this movie. And I of course I have a lot of the negatives that I'm also going to address as well. A lot of those negatives have to do with the way certain characters are handled and certain and now certain plot points are not even expanded upon but are referenced and we don't have a movie that actually to actually go based off those plot points so let me just get the positives out of the way first in terms of this movie's cast i have no complaints i love benedict cumberbatch as the character of dr strange it's no different in this movie. However, I do think they lean way too heavily into Doctor Strange being a jokey character, and I don't really care for that. I like my Doctor Strange to not be like Tony Stark. I like my Doctor Strange, no, like to, have Strange to have more of a dark, sardonic sense of humor that's very, very light on the quips and very, very light on just trying to get a joke out of somebody. That's just how I feel personally. But as an overall performance, I do like coming back to this movie. He does have moments where he does go into dark way where, where he does have a little bit of that dark sense of humor and he does t have a, does have some moments of seriousness and then he has moments where he's doing bad jokes and bad one-liners and bad punch lines and 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 it just doesn't work for me i don't like it at all i don't like not it's the, the performance doesn't bother me it's the writing and the dialogue that uh, that that bothers me when it comes to come back with that come when it comes to Doctor Strange in this movie is because there are certain lines and there are certain things that Strange does that makes him come across like a like a complete idiot like he basically leads Wanda to Comertage and then he acts oblivious when it happens like how would, how did you not know this was not going to happen yeah like I don't like the fact that Doctor Strange was played to be a dummy in this movie that doesn't that doesn't sit well with me. <clears throat> Uh, I mean, I do like the character interactions that he has, you know, especially with Wong, because I like I like Benedict Wong as the character of Wong. I think that come I think that Benedict Wong. It's so weird that the man's name is Benedict Wong. He's playing a character called Wong. Try and wrap your head around that. <clears throat> but in essence, I do like the chemistry between Strange and Wong. They have good comedic timing, good comedic chemistry, and they just, and, I just, and I just like them as a team. I don't like the fact that Wong is so so supreme and not Doctor Strange. I think that's really ridiculous. I don't like that whatsoever, but I do like the actors who play the roles, and I do like their chemistry together. Uh, even though I think Scarlet Witch takes up way too much screen time than she's supposed to in this movie, I still like Elizabeth Olsen as the character. And See, I, like I like how Olsen plays Scarlet Witch as a horror movie villain. It works for the tone of this movie and what Sam Raimi was going for. I like it. It does fit character-wise and, and acting and presentation-wise. However, in terms of her motivations, they're going based off WandaVision. 
in which that show tries to paint her as a victim when she was actually a villain. This movie is no different. I mean, it tries to fix it in certain areas, but the MCU needs to stop justifying Wanda's actions from WandaVision. She held an entire town hostage against her will. She created children through the use of magic. She is not a real mother. She is a fake mother. And this movie continues to paint her as a victim when she's not. I understand the dark hole has corrupted her mind, but still, the way this movie presents it, it's pre as presenting Wanda as still being justified with her actions. No, you should be condemning her. Doctor Strange should be condemning her and not giving her a pat on the back for saying, oh, well, you did the, you did the right thing. No, because guess what? The dark hole didn't corrupt her mind in WandaVision. In WandaVision. She didn't find the dark hole until after, until, until the... Until she met, until she defeated Agatha. Up to that point, Wanda was a perfectly sane mind in Wanda in WandaVision. And this, now she's corrupted by the dark hole. She's still doing the exact same thing. Stop, please stop. Paint either, either make Wanda into a hero or make her into a villain. This whole thing of what direction you want to take her in, I do not care. I don't like it whatsoever. Stop tiptoeing around it. Either go full villainous with Wanda or scale down. Because after the events of this movie, she is more villainous than she is heroic. Because she does absolutely nothing heroic in this movie. Everything Wanda does in this movie is 100% pure villainy. To the point where she's trying to kidnap a child so that way she can suck away that child's power. But in so doing so, she's going to kill said child. And she does everything in her power to get to said child. To the point where she where she brings down Kamertage and kills nearly every single sorcerer there, and then you go to another universe where she where she pretty much dispatches the entire Illuminati. I'll get to that when I get to my negatives, <clears throat> like like my full full negatives. Even though I'm mixing up my negatives right now, but still, in, in case the the point still stands. I, I I like how I like the direction of Scarlet Witch being a villain. I do not like how they keep tiptoeing that line. After this movie, you can't justify Wanda being an Avenger. It's it's never going to happen. She, she spilled so much blood, it's ridiculous. Not to mention, once again, she held an entire town hostage against their will. And she wasn't even possessed by the Darkhold at that point. She did it willingly. Stop it. Please, stop it. Rant on the writing of Scarlet Witch aside... I do like Elizabeth Olsen's performance. I like how it, how she's played like a horror how how she's played like a horror villain. The Scarlet Witch has this intense, creepy presence to her. It's very eerie, and she and she does come across as, as a legitimate threat. And when she is dispatching everyone, it is fun to watch. It is it really is fun to watch. I ain't gonna lie. I did get a, a lot of enjoyment out of that. And Sam Raimi has a chance to dip into his horror roots with the Scarlet Witch, which I really appreciate. Uh, there's this really cool sequence in which the characters have to cover every reflection because Wanda's using the reflections in order to get to them. I thought that was actually pretty cool and pretty clever. And that's very reminiscent of stuff like the Evil Dead and things like that. So I love that. So I like that aspect. I like that stuff. It was good. Uh, I somewhat enjoyed the scenes of her and Wong traveling to this place known as... Uh, Windergard, which is uh, which is like this, which is like this mystical place that the sor that the sorcerers that the sorcerer supremes are not should not be venturing to because it's so cause it's so powerful with corrupted magic. You know that uh, that stuff is okay. I mean, I think the running gag of Wong having fake out deaths wore out its welcome very very quickly. But the bantering between the two was decent. It wasn't anything mind shattering. Wasn't anything great. But it was okay for what it was. So I ain't gonna complain. Uh, the actress who played America Chavez, she was not an annoying child actor. I think she takes up way too much screen time. I don't think America Chavez is a very interesting character, to be honest with you. Like, she has this, this power to jump from, dement, from, uh, from universe to universe. But that's basically it. There's nothing really to her character. But there's, there's nothing really to her character in a sense that she has to take up all the screen time from, from Doctor Strange and have more development than he does. I wasn't a big fan of that. And I'm also start I'm also getting turned off to the idea of Doctor Strange being a mentor to children. Like with Spider-Man, it made sense. Now with this movie, it's gonna quickly turn into a running gag if you don't break away from that. Uh so yeah, that's it with that. But I'll say this: at least Strange and Chavez have decent on-screen chemistry with one another. And like I said, the actress didn't come across as overly annoying. 
and she did have and she did have energy to her and she and, and i'm not gonna lie she did have an energy to her and she did come across as somewhat likable so i ain't gonna fully condemn the movie for that uh in terms of this movie's handling of its supporting cast it's a mixed bag uh rachel mcadams returns as christine playing two different versions she plays the prime version of christine who gets married and cucks dr strange really dr strange couldn't get his couldn't get christine back he has to watch her get married to someone else that sucks and then you see then he then she plays a different version of christine in a different universe in which they in which she helps dr strange try to stop stop the scarlet witch uh, that was decent. That was fun seeing Doctor Strange and Christine team up at the end of the to the end of the movie. That was all right. It wasn't anything all that interesting, and it it kind of wraps up a storyline that was established in in the first Doctor Strange movie. Though it would have worked better with the prime version of Christine than an alternate version of Christine because it doesn't mean anything to me in the long run. I know, and that is what it is. Um, you have Michael Stahlberg returning as Do as Dr. Nicodemus West from the first movie. He's just there to question Dr. Strange's his decision to to give Thanos the Time Stone. That's pretty much it. He does absolutely nothing. Why was he in this movie? Just to be a cameo and have and have a forced joke about him losing his cats and losing his brother. That is what it is. Whatever. I don't know. Uh... <clears throat> and then you get to the Illuminati. <clears throat> now, okay, no, before I get to the Illuminati, because I'll save that for the negatives, let's talk about the visual aspects of this movie. This movie is directed by Sam Raimi. If you don't know who Sam Raimi is, stop living, stop living under a rock. Watch the first three Evil Dead movies. Watch Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Watch the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy. Watch any movie with the name Sam Raimi in it, and you'll know why this man always is revered and never jeered and it turns to being a visual artist sam raimi is amazing as a filmmaker and as a director and one of this movie's biggest strong points is the visual style and again a lot of that ha a lot of that credit has to go to sam raimi sam raimi was built to make horror movies and he was built to make superhero movies and when you put those two elements together you get dr Str you get dr strange too now it's unfortunate that Sam Raimi was restrained and he didn't really get a chance to go full creative nonsense with this movie, but you get those elements, you know. There's a lot of scenes where you get elements of Evil Dead, like with the crazy visuals with like the camera zooms and like the door shutting in one scene and a camera zooms into Doctor Strange's face. That's straight out of the Evil Dead. You have a lot of scenes that have the dissolving effect that Sam Raimi was also known for in a lot of his movies. Like this movie's like the film does have a lot of cool creative visuals to it like there's this one scene where dr strange uh pretty much possesses his own dead corpse and that's sh and that's classic sam raimi and that's also a an element of horror comedy with that with that aspect as well you have this really cool scene where dr strange is fighting off a an evil version of himself and he's using musical notes to take to, to take to, to try and stop him like this movie does have a lot of visual creativeness and of course again a lot of credits got to go to Sam Raimi. The man legitimately is a filmmaking genius. Like, he is not a conventional director. He's a unique director, which is why Sam Raimi doesn't do a lot of big studio movies, is because they don't deserve his talents. Like, the studio movies that deserved his talents were the, were the Spider-Man trilogy, because he was able to take them in directions he wanted to take them in. The third movie is up in the air and how you want to view it, but this is not a review in the Spider-Man trilogy. This is a review of Doctor Strange. But I'm just using that as a point of reference. So yeah, visually, I have no complaints about this movie. This movie is actually very, very visually creative, and I like it a lot. A lot of the action sequences in this movie, they are kind of fun. Like, I do like the opening action sequence of Defender Strange and America Chavez running from this gigantic monster that it was revealed to have been sent by Wanda. That was a fun scene. Like, this big octopus scene that's terrorizing New York. That's also a really fun sequence of Doctor Strange and Wong trying to fight this 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 monster off while trying to protect America. Chavez, that was also a lot of fun. Uh, this the scene where Wanda takes out the entire Illuminati. Listen, all criticisms aside, I not gonna lie, it does it does heighten the threat of Wanda as a villain and as and as somebody that's gonna that Doctor Strange is gonna have a hard time trying to take down. Again. That could have been that whole thing could have been handled so much better than what it, than how it was in this thing and than how it was, but just from a but just from a certain aspect, it was nice. It was okay. It did a good job at heightening the threat of Wanda. 
Uh, I like I like the the invasion of Wanda the Wanda's invasion of Kamertage. I like that sequence. It had it had good elements to it. And like I mentioned before, the whole the whole sequence with like the reflections and the and the water puddles that was visually creative and visually cool to see. So yeah, in terms of the directing department, no complaints. Out. In terms of these, in terms of these cinematography, this is a vibrant, colorful movie. I like it. When you compare it to that board fest known as the Eternals, Doctor Strange actually has a lot of bombast to it. It has a lot of creative juice to it. So I can't condemn it. So. Now that I got now that I got my positives and slight negatives out of the way, let's get to my full negatives. And this is where the movie frustrates me to no end. <clears throat> this movie, as I mentioned, this is a Wanda movie first and a Doctor Strange movie second. And I don't like that aspect of it. What I hate even more is that you bring back Shieta Wally U4 as Baron Mardo. You make reference to the first movie of him wanting to of him wanting to hunt down sorcerers. But that's it. You make references to the first movie. Doctor Strange is talking about him like they had a separate movie that they had it, that they had an entire movie of Mordo trying to kill him, and that never happened. Where's that movie? What this movie should have been in terms of its story, Baron Mardo should have been the lead villain, and he should have teamed up with the Scarlet Witch. Now, <clears throat> because the end of the first Doctor Strange movie already established that Mordo wants to go on a hunt to take down all the sorcerers and take and pretty much strip them of their power because he feels the world has too many sorcerers since he can't do it on his own I would have had him team up with Scarlet Witch I would have had Mordo present the, the Darkhold to the Scarlet Witch so that way he can control and possess the Scarlet Witch to try and help him take down Doctor Strange and after Doctor Strange and Wong and America take down Mordo and Scarlet Witch and Scarlet Witch finally comes to her senses this is where I would have had Mordo pretty much make his last resort and put him on that road to the dark dimension to Dormammu to being Dormammu, Dormammu's herald and setting up that third movie that, were, that, that will see Barry Mordo and Dormammu take down Doctor Strange in the ultimate final battle this movie should have been that Multiverse of Madness should have been Mordo and Scarlet Witch Hunting down strange throughout all the multiverses that are presented in this movie. Instead, Doctor Strange in America, they go to an alternate version of uh, our, of, uh, of the 616 reality. They meet Barry Mardo, who is actually very friendly to Doctor Strange, who is also a member of the Illuminati, which has Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. Uh, it has um, the Monica, it has the Maria Rambo version of Captain Marvel. It has Captain Carter. It has the return of Professor X, played by Patrick Stewart. And it also has Black Bolt from the Inhumans. <clears throat> so, yeah. And this is where the movie also further frustrates me. Listen, I don't, I don't mind an alternate version of Baron Mardo. Hell, I think a scene of Mardo Prime interacting with his alternate version could have actually been pretty cool. And I would have actually had a fight scene of the alternate Mardo fighting his present self because he does not want to go down the road that his pre that his that his alternate self is going down. And I would have actually had uh, the uh, eight three eight Mardo team up with Strange in a losing effort against the six one six Mardo. That could have been a pretty cool scene that never happened, of course, because fuck creativity <clears throat> and fuck making a movie that actually makes sense. Instead, we get this whole thing of an alternate Mardo. Who is friendly with Doctor Strange, but then he doesn't trust Doctor Strange because this universe is Doctor Strange. Used the Dark Hole to beat Thanos, then became corrupted by it. Then the Illuminati had to kill him, and 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 so on and so forth. And then you get the whole thing of the Illuminati putting Strange on trial, and the trial lasts all of three seconds because Wanda attacks a bunch of Ultron guards, and then she wipes out the entire Illuminati without the Illuminati giving a fight. This is our first introduction to Mr. Fantastic Reed Richards who is played by the fan cast of John Krasinski and he gets wiped out within a matter of seconds I'll say this John Krasinski he did a decent job playing Reed Richards for the for the for the few moments of screen time that he got you know it was cool and, and only that it was just cool just seeing Mr. Fantastic finally introduced into the MCU I just don't like how they turn Reed Richards into another idiot so let's see Doctor Strange is an idiot for giving Wanda the location of Kamertage, 
This Reed Richards is an idiot because he flat out tells Wanda that Black Bolt, one of the most powerful members of the Illuminati who can kill you by the sound of his voice, has the power to do so, giving Wanda the idea to take away Black Bolt's voice and Black Bolt kills himself. Reed Richards, the smartest man alive. Bing! Yeah, at that point, the entire Illuminati deserved to get wiped out by the Scarlet Witch because Reed Richards became a, became a blithing buffoon who gave away the secret weapon. Black Bolt kills himself. The two, uh, Ca Agent Carter and, Cap and Captain Marvel last longer, which is ridiculous, but Wanda wipes them out. <clears throat> so what was the whole point of the Illuminati? Fan service. That's it. They serve no purpose. You could have done something cool and interesting with the Illuminati, but you didn't. But instead, you just did, you just did fan service central, and it, and ultimately led nothing. It ultimately led to nothing. Another thing that led to nothing, and that was really frustrating, was how it was the inclusion of Professor X, Charles Xavier. I like the direction that they were going in with Charles Xavier using his powers to go into Wanda's mind to try and help, to try and help save her. But then you kill him off, and, and but then you kill him. Then you kill him off by snapping his neck. Once again, the running gag of Professor X dying on screen has gotten so old and so stale. I don't care anymore. Not only that, is done in such an unceremonious way. Like, she literally snaps the man's neck and he dies. Why? 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 Why do we have to kill Professor X? Why does Professor X have to die? Was this necessary? No. Wanda was already a threat because she took out the rest of the Illuminati. Now you got to have her kill Professor X? Come on, man. Not a fan. Didn't like that shit at all. I thought it sucked. <clears throat> and then you get to the whole third act where they're finally on uh, Wonder Gore. As I mentioned earlier, Doctor Strange possesses a, a corpse version of himself. And this is how they're... And along with Wanda, that's how they're able... I'm sorry. Along with America, that's how they're able to defeat Wanda... So it's actually America who defeats Wanda while Dr. Strange just plays a helping hand. <clears throat> and then you get to the whole thing of America Chavez being uh, joining the uh, Comertage and trying to use the, uh, the ancient art of sorcery. And then, you get the, then you get this scene before the credits of Dr. Strange getting the third eye. Then you get a random post mid credit scene. How long, how long after the events of getting a third eye does this take place in? I don't know. We get the debut of Clea played by Charlize Theron. She tells Doctor Strange that he started an incursion and they go into the dark dimension to probably fight Dormammu <clears throat> and Baron Mardo. Hopefully. We'll see. Knowing how MCU has handled this, has handled this, who the hell knows? <clears throat> so yeah, that's pretty much Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness in a nutshell. At the end of the day, I don't hate this movie. I am more frustrated by this movie than I do than I have disdain for this movie. I admire Sam Raimi's creative visuals. This is a this is a great looking movie from a creative standpoint and from a visual standpoint. It's got a lot of uniqueness to it. I like the how, the I like the horror movie element that Sam Raimi went for with this movie. There are a lot of moments where this movie does look like a straight up horror movie. Like um, <clears throat> like I love the uh, the scene of of Wanda and Strange talking meeting for the first time, and it segues into this like reddish hellish landscape. That was creatively cool. I like that a lot. I like how Scarlet Witch is made into a villain. I don't like the fact how they continue to push her as being sympathetic when she shouldn't be sympathetic. And the fact that she's hopping around from universe to universe to get kids that were never hers to begin with is also getting kind of frustrating. And I hate the line that that she throws at Doctor Strange where, <clears throat> where she tries to justify her actions and it just doesn't work at all. She basically compares what she did to Westview to Doctor Strange handing Thanos the Time Stone, but it doesn't make any sense. And what Doctor Strange, what Doctor Strange said, makes more sense than Wanda's rebuttal. Doctor Strange had to make a wartime sacrifice, but that was for a greater good. Wanda made a selfish, did a selfish thing. She did it for her own personal gain. She didn't do it for a greater good. She did it just that. She did it. She did it just for herself. This is where I. This is where the disconnect happens. Stop trying to make Wanda sympathetic when I have nothing to go off of, especially since the Darkhold did not corrupt her during WandaVision. <clears throat> I got a big problem with that. <clears throat> so yeah, with all that being said, I'm just going to give Doctor Strange to a solid... 
I'm sorry, I gotta give it a five out of 10. It's a very mixed bag for me. Half of this movie, I actually do like. Another half of this movie, especially with the way it handled its story, the way it handled certain characters, the, 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 just the ridiculous misuse of Baron Mardo, and the fact that we don't even get a 616 Mardo in this movie is ridiculous because that's for that, the first Doctor Strange movie was setting up Mardo to do something cool. And like I said, this movie should have been Mardo and Scarlet Witch teaming up to take down Doctor Strange and chasing him all throughout the multiverse. And this movie should have ended with Mardo making the decision to go into the dark dimension to team up with Dormammu. That would have made the mid credit scene with, with Charlize Theron make more sense instead of just coming up out of nowhere. <laughs> so yeah, 5 out of 10 for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe. And I'll check you back next time for more.